first stage in my work I usually do is, is to create digital designs. I often use references of water and try to copy some of the shapes and textures within that and within the colour palette of materials I have create designs that I somewhat follow. <laughs> Once I collect all my materials from charity shops, I cut them up into strips and organise them by colour ready to use for weaving. I use a variety of techniques within my weaving, as in going in between each individual strand, sometimes alternating between twos. I use wrapping around each of the warp strings. Weaving is all about creating the wefts within the warps. After a day, you can see my studio space is a bit cluttered and messy, but this is how it looks throughout the process. To add and create texture, I, I use methods such as wire knots, sumac, and pile weave. The different materials also greatly affect how the texture will be perceived. Um, I found that knitted jumpers often created a really nice woolly textural effect. I started working with the loom horizontally but as time went on that became way too difficult for me to reach so I put it back up to the vertical. It is a tedious process with a lot of cutting materials but I think it's important to realise that taking the environmentally sustainable approach isn't always the easiest approach. Once I finished the first half I tidied up the edges by wrapping white all around the edge to secure it in and give it a cleaner finish. And this is the top before I remove it from the frame. I just went in to add little extra details and textural features that I thought it was lacking. Just going in, weaving little fractions of it, adding little frothy textures. Now to clean up the mess of the back. I probably should have cleaned as I went along but I like to keep myself malleable and it took quite a while but it looks so much nicer once the back is clean. I know it's not necessary but I much prefer it. Just tidying up by weaving and knotting all the threads at the back so it wouldn't become undone and would look much cleaner. was to add structure so the piece would stand on its own when removed from the loom. As you can see I picked quite an unconventional material the hula hoop but because all my materials are secondhand and sustainable um, I wanted to you know use whatever I could find in charity shops or skips that would fit my purposes. Therefore the hula hoop was perfect for the arch design I'd created and I was lucky it was the right size as well. There's the back, I'll clean that up later. <laughs> but right now you can see it's sturdy enough. And I'm excited to take it off the loom. Um, this is it in my space and ready to start the next day. <laughs> I collected these pieces of woods from a skip to add structure to the piece and this is the process that I used to create the loom from this old frame I had. So this 
thread I got from a charity shop and the frame was unwanted from a student who was selling it really cheap. And it's pretty easy to make your own loom if you want to do it this way. Next I just did some simple rows with the thread just to add a nice base for the rest of my weave. The stages I went for the bottom half of the weave are pretty much the same as the top half. Um, and then it was just trying to add those two together. I used bamboo that I found in skips and things just to um, add structure to the sides. And then just, you know, showing you how I cut off and tie the weave so it doesn't fray and then attach those two by tying all of the warp strings together and then you'll see later I, I go over those with extra coloured material to hide the seams. The bamboo just acts as a nice structure to, to keep the wool in place. This is what the piece looked like as I finished connecting it together and put it back in my space. Okay, I may have forgot to film the uh, transforming the back but that was just me taking pictures of it and once it was pretty much a finished piece and <laughs> you can see I added holds so it would have something to hang on and me struggling trying to put it back up again because it's actually quite heavy. <laughs> The studio spaces was quite surreal to see everyone's desks and empty, ready to get for the exhibition. And I was the last one there, just trying to empty up my space, about to move my piece to where I was going to exhibition. And this is the space that I'm going to transform for my exhibition. Quite a bit of painting to do, but that should be fun. We were supplied with white paint for the walls and grey paint for the floors and I just needed to right here hang up some, well, to screw in some screws so I could hang up my weave after I painted the walls. Here you can see me painting the floor grey. I like later decide not to paint the whole floor as I wanted a walkway, so that was a bit of a spontaneous decision that I had to then paint over. And then I painted the wide walkway. I will still have pieces on the sides of the water going alongside it, but this is what I have so far. I'm quite happy with it, my exhibition space. And this is my finished piece, I can't wait for you to 